Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of Tales from the Dominion Opus 15 uh, uh, series. Uh, if you've been with me for a while, you know this is, uh, you know I've done one of these before. We did Tales from the Abyss, the Opus 14 uh, vlog series where we talked about every week's uh, deck lists and tournament results, thoughts process, and pretty much uh, decks, combos, results, uh, matchups, and just about everything Final Fantasy. Uh, that I go through in my week to week, right? Uh, this is going to be the same thing. Uh, hopefully, I can find ways of making it better. I will get, obviously, you guys are going to get deck lists right away. Um, we're going to be working since this is still early on. This is this was technically supposed to be last week's video, but because I had Xanark in this weekend, uh, I'm going to be talking about that as well. So I had to wait for that as well. So that's why this video is coming out today, and you guys are getting like a triple feature this week. Since episode two should be out Wednesday, and and then we have a podcast hopefully by the other week. So that's all great stuff. Uh, Opus fifteen brought a lot of interesting cards. Um, we have to talk about how I think this set might be the set that we have for sealed events and drafting and limited or whatever because uh, because of the reprints and such a high set number, right? Like number of cards per set. I think it's in like the one forties. Haven't had something that that large in a while. Um, I'm going to talk about these two decks. I have the Rebels deck, the uh, Water, uh, Water, er, I'm sorry, Fire Wind Rebels deck. We have the Water Ice. I, I know Stern is here. Stern, this is before the ban, by the way, just to be clear. Um, and we'll talk about that and where it's going to go as well. Um, but this was the sixth deck. And then this is the Warrior of Light deck I played for, uh, for Xanarkand. Xanarkand 2, right? Uh, so yeah, guys. As always, thank you for listening, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy the series, and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, always leave them in the comments below, and you can see the deck list. And that's it. So let's get started, alright? First off, we have the Rebels deck. Um, if you guys haven't had a chance to build these yet, uh, I honestly... It, this, is, this is the version I built because I don't actually have um, any cards yet. I haven't been able... I bought one box that I got on Black Friday from my local store. I have one pre-release kit that I overpaid for. I had store credit, so it was okay. I paid 50 for it when they're supposed to be 35, I believe. Um, and then uh, Andy also got a, a kit and he's, you know, we're sharing that stuff. So this is uh, the results of, oh, and I borrowed a Furion because I, we, were, we, we pulled two and then I brought a third one from a buddy at locals, Brandon, shout out to Brandon. <laughs> Um, so keep that in mind when you're watching these lists. Again, this is the week one of Opus 15. So Triple Maria, Double Ishtola, we, we added the Ritz March engine, uh, Double Lednar, Ferion, Leon, two General Leo, uh, Triple Guy, uh, Double Philia, the summons were Chocobo and Amaterasu, uh, Layak, Lava Spiders, uh, Lacretius, Samurai, Dragoon, Althea, Stiltskin, Joseph, Mont Blanc, and Donied. Donned. Uh, again, if you haven't played this list or you haven't messed with Rebels yet, uh, they're actually very strong. I was surprised they put in so much work and are able to do many things. Uh, I actually think one of the things that's missing from this one is I took out a Lednar and we had one Arden. We added the new Opus 15 Arden. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. So, uh, the main thing I found out when playing this deck is Maria's absolutely crucial. Um, having her early in the break zone or on the field is very important. Uh, also, crystal generating for him is also very nice. Uh, so that's why we have the triple dragoons and triple samurai. I think in this in the second version that I'm working on, it has even the new rem that she generates one and activates stuff. Um, but the deck's pretty simple, right? You you open you set up some back rows at least three. Three is the average, right? You want to stay at three minimum. Uh, because that's you can kind of go in every direction from here right uh, at three you can pitch one to play guy uh, at three damage you bring you always bring in Leon and Leon brings in Maria from the break zone uh, the other thing is when uh, 10k forward attacks uh, Leon will trigger and you draw a card so guy gets super big uh, Leon gets big Firion gets big um, and with Maria on board they all get huge <laughs> Uh, the other thing we want to do to uh, take advantage of Leon, obviously, um, he's not a bad card to have out on his own. Um, it's just better at three, 3 damage and beyond. But uh, with Lava Spider, you're always getting this trigger. 
you're always going to get his uh, his drop card trigger uh, with any forward in here. Uh, probably when you have him, he's five, six, seven, except Maria, right? Maria needs at least another uh, two rebels for her. Uh, so the big thing is you gonna you kind of want to overextend and then have everyone attack that turn, um, and then Leon will recoup your whole hand. Like he'll generate everything you used up one turn, so next turn you are set. Okay, um, I kept I played General Leo here um, because I thought it would be great to prevent Amaterasu's and stuff, and I think it did for the few rounds I did. I, I ended up going two two that day. Uh, at locals, I lost to Firewater EX Bursts, and then I lost to uh, an Avalanche Operatives deck. Uh, it's, it was a weird list, but uh, definitely I got I got hit with some EX Bursts in both of those matches and kind of like pushed me in a different direction. Um, but when you are able to get these guys online, they're really huge, and then the value is just insane uh, with the cards. Uh, and then I did it at my final match, actually. I, I was able to draw six cards and then play the Ardent, discard six. My, it was mid game, so my opponent had to like pretty much choose to get rid of all his, all of his board and stuff. Uh, this is what I played in the tournament too, as well. Obviously, it's <laughs> uh, a few changes I made or I plan on making. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna cut the Ritz March engine. It's very useful, but it detracts from this, from the Rebels idea. Also, I found out how important Maria is that day. Uh, if you don't see Maria early, uh, Leon's kind of a sh like a shitter, and then they're all susceptible to like uh, kill spells and damage stuff like that. Also, uh, even if it was only one dark card, Arden, drawing Arden at the worst, at the inopportune times was kind of annoying, but it, it was a still a really good card, so I like Arden. I'll see where he fits in eventually. Um, Layak is also a nice addition uh, one I want to talk about. Before playtesting, I didn't have Layak in, and so this, la this list reflects the post post uh, playtesting. And the reason I, I like Layak and I want to uh, add more backups uh, instead of like this uh, FFTA package that kind of reactivate all my forwards um, after they do is because you always want to swing in, right? You need to swing in to draw the cards. Uh, there was a few times where I swung in and I got to the layak or I had him already and I just, you know, play it after uh, forcing my opponent to either not attack or attack. And then my guy who's usually at uh, 13k just stands right up. So a uh, very useful card, very something to think about when you're playing this list or variant of this list of the rebels. The, um, I think I'm going to keep playing until I get my boxes. This is what I'll be playing. So next week is also going to be rebels. Probably, uh, it'll probably be these decks for three, for two weeks until I can get all of my cards. Uh, also I want to add the canes in here, uh, the new legendary cane, but I don't have any. So that's that. Uh, next we have, uh, the water ice, uh, category six deck. Now I love all of these cards. I love go, go, um, Umaru, Setzer especially, um, and Celeste. So these are all very good cards. Um, I'm playing Atomos, Mind Flayer, and Chivalry. Uh, this I had a, like a 26 forward list because I was going to do the Stern thing because you know we wanted to take a, uh, advantage of this. I won't, I'm not going to talk too much about this one because of the, the Stern is pointless, right? So where I'm going to go with this is I'm definitely going to throw in the Noctis, actually. I'm going to switch this for the Light Package. Um, and I think there's also a version I'm going to work in where I add the the squid <laughs> uh and he I, di I didn't think about it but if you're able to trigger him off of this uh then you're gonna send stuff to the bottom of the of the deck uh and the extra rays are also there for the go-go uh, drawing two cards at uh and then six i'm sorry drawing two cards for four cards with go-go and at five damage beyond you're drawing six cards with go-go very efficient very good uh the times i did it it was very nice uh, there was supposed to be one realm in here as well. I think uh, I made some minor adjustments the day of. So I took off like two Leviathans um, and an Atomos. No, I, since I only had one Mind Flayer, I let my opponent, one of my no, one of my teammates borrow it. And then uh, I took off these other two to add. Um, what else did I have to add to benefit the Go-Go? I actually almost forgot. I think I have the deck around here somewhere, but... Um, I wanted to make sure that Gogo -Go was uh, being useful. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's a few ways for him to trigger out here, right? Like if the Mog was able to live, we're drawing two cards. Uh, the X-rays draw very, very good cards. Um, the Setzer Pay lets you trigger twice as well. 
and uh, I think yeah no I think those are the ones and then the stern was the big thing so um, we're gonna work on this a little more I like this but I think I'm gonna take advantage of this a lot more uh, we need to generate multiple more crystals and replay sets are a lot <laughs> Uh, because he's able to bring in characters absolutely for free of any cost off the top of the deck. So if we're cheating in big stuff, then he's absurd. So I kind of want to uh, add him with, you know, the Lakshmi and the little Sahajins that kind of uh, reveal off the top and let me, uh, you know, orchestrate my draws or my reveals. And this is going to be very abusable. So I think that's the direction this deck is going to take next week. Lastly, we're going to talk about Xanarkin. Uh, Xanarkin was a fun event. It was my first online event. And so it was. It took me about a week and a half to kind of figure out Octagon. And then it was figure out which deck I was going to use. Uh, I was dancing around uh, Vice Kings with Noctis now instead of Stern. Uh, dancing around this. Dancing around Mono Water. And uh, the Rebels deck. Right. Ultimately, I just wanted to play something I'm very interested in pursuing. So I stuck with the Warrior of Lights. Uh, I had a different list, which was kind of like all over the place. Uh, and then Andy helped me refine the back. Andy helped me refine the forwards a little bit and kind of like the, the control the colors, right? I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be four colors because we had the earth, had the Ingus. I wanted to have Tyro and Shantotos available to me. So I decided to take that stuff out. Um, the biggest place here, if you guys aren't aware, is the Lena and Bart's. Uh, these cards are absolutely absurd together. Um, they are what's going to be able to make this deck playable again. Um, the, the deck itself still has the same weaknesses, unfortunately. It really sh gets wrecked by uh, Control and uh, Amaterasu's and Mist Dragons, which is why I also wanted to play Earth, because I have access to, like, Lails and Mist Dragons myself. But um, I, I'll have to see which way I take the deck now. But I was, uh, again, going back to the Barts and, and Lena thing. Uh, when when Barts is out and you play Lena and you have at least one crystal, right? You can, uh, all three of these autos are going to go on the stack. As priority turn player, you're going to be able to organize them however you like, right? So you can even do the second one of Lena, second Lena's auto at the, at the bottom. And then the first one. Uh, and then... Bart's at the top, right? Because you want to gain the crystal first. Uh, keep in mind that Lena's effects are at resolution, so uh, as long as they're on the stack, you don't have to pay until you decide to resolve. So what that means is you're going to gain your crystal from Bart's, uh, then Lena's effect to bring in one uh, forward will come in. You will choose whoever you have, Dusk, Refia, Luneth, Souls, uh, to bring in a two drop. I'm sorry. It's actually just Soul in this case. I don't have the other Warrior of Light. Uh, which I'm going to fit in somehow. I, I probably take out another Lunith. Um, and you'll bring them in. Then Bart will trigger again on top of the next one. You'll get, you'll have your two counters and then you can play that as well. So um, it's it's very important that you guys understand how this, these combos work and that you have total control of Lena and what she brings in and timings and everything. Uh, if Ferris is out for all of that as well, you will obviously stack the, the damage is for Ferris as well. Uh, the other thing is also with Arc. Arc will do the same thing. Arc will trigger multiple effects to activate your backups. And the, at three damage, you can reborn Lena. Lena will reborn uh, up to two more things if you have the crystals. Uh, this guy generates an, an absurdly large amount of crystals. Uh, probably the fastest way to do it. Um, obviously, it's limited to bringing in Warriors of Light. But this deck does that in, in spades, right? Like, these guys are super cheap. When Ferris is out, it's just play, 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 play. Crystal, 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 crystal. And you're good. So, very strong engine. Um, they're good. They fixed the deck. They made it more Opus 15-ish. More like meta, right? They brought it up to speed. Um, I wasn't sure where to go with the summons. Um, I left Amaterasu because obviously they're very good. Uh, Sildras to kind of fix some stuff, but I didn't really find myself enjoying them too much. I don't know. Uh, there's got to be better things to do. And same thing with this Bahamut. Um, I probably never used it all tournament. Uh, I've... Uh, the, I went. I ended up going. I guess technically three, four, because I dropped. I dropped after three rounds, um, but it is what it is. Uh, I was on the. I was on the X two until the fifth round, and then I lost. Um, my matchups were, mono oh, were samurais, monks. Um, I think.
think there was something else. What else? Uh, I know there was another mono fire. Yeah. So it was it was samurais, monks, mono fire, uh, Bart's Boko, samurais. So three fire decks. Again, very annoying for this deck. Uh, I was able to beat the first one. I went I went decent in the third in my third round and my fifth round. I beat Bart's Boko, um, which I think I I can take advantage of that matchup very well as long as uh, Ferris is, stays out. Um, and then the the monk matchup, I we played a gentleman's game, and I realized I lose in that in that format. Like if I let monks develop their board, uh, they have the advantage the whole time. So not a good idea. Um, again, as always, this warrior of light deck is always going to be the backups is the problem. Uh, Princess uh, Sarah into Tycoon is good, but I just she kept being more dead as I went, so I limited dropped her down to one, added the samurais and summoners and stuff. Um, I'm gonna keep working on these lists, guys. I was I was really excited to play all of these decks, and I will continue to play all of these decks for one more week. So if you guys have anything you want to say to the, about them, any comments, please leave them in the comments below. And yeah. Thanks. Sorry if this one's a little long. There was a lot to talk about. So uh, stay tuned for the rest of the week. We have lots to come up. And I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, guys.